In this video, we'll talk about hemorrhage. So, uh, basically, what is hemorrhage? It is the large amount of bleeding in a short period of time. So, the definition goes as large amount of bleeding in a short time. Given by Thigerson, Gilt, and Cromer. Okay, now there are various types of hemorrhages. So uh, we will talk about the classification. First one is based on the nature of vessel involved. Either it can be arterial, venous hemorrhage or capillary hemorrhage. Now in this arterial what we will see is the color of blood will be bright red. In venous it will be dark red and in capillary red color. Now over here what we will see that the blood it jets out because the pulsation of the arteries can be seen easily and then it is controlled. Uh, but here it does not, does not jet out but slowly oozes out. Over here, it never jets out, same slowly oozes out. It can be controlled because we can see the pulsation of the artery. This cannot be controlled, so difficult to control because the vein is going to get retracted and then becomes non-pulsatile. This is also difficult to control. Now this is the one type of classification which is based on the nature of the vessel. Now another type is uh, upon the time when it is occurring based on timing of hemorrhage. This is very important based on timing of hemorrhage. Now it can either be primary or secondary or it can be reactionary. Now primary is basically when it occurs at the time of surgery. Reactionary will occur basically 6 to 8 hours after surgery. Now this basically occurs because of the increased hypertension in the post-operative period due to which uh, uh, there is, is uh, there is hemorrhage. Now uh, certain conditions like sneezing, coughing, okay, uh, these can lead to the reactionary hemorrhage. In secondary, this basically occurs after 5 to 7 days after the surgery. Now this basically occurs when there is an infection and the microorganisms, they eat away the suture material. causing slowing, slowing of vessel wall. Now another uh, type is also there which is based on the duration of hemorrhage, based on duration of hemorrhage. Now either it can be acute or it can be chronic or it can be acute on chronic. Now acute, it basically occurs suddenly Example, esophageal varices. Now this one occurs over a period of time, as the word suggests, occurs over a period of time, like chronic duodenal ulcer, hemorrhage, then hemorrhoids, piles, then uh, tuberculous ulcer of ileum. Now acute on chronic is more severe, it is very dangerous uh, because the bleeding occurs in individuals who are at uh, who are already hypoxic. So this basically occurs in patients who are already hypoxic. Now there is one more type on which the basis uh, we uh, talk about hemorrhage. Now that type is uh, basically either the visibility of the uh, hemorrhage or the nature of bleeding. So the fourth one is depending upon nature of bleeding either it is external hemorrhage or it is internal hemorrhage or it is initially concealed that is in internal and later external okay so this is also called as concealed hemorrhage now in external hemorrhage whenever there is a, a uh, injury or there is epistaxis or there is hematemesis okay uh, in case of internal uh, basically internal bleeding like splenic rupture injury
okay now in this basically we have hemorrhoids the uh, hematuria melena hemothorax cerebral hemorrhage okay now out of all these this is the most fatal okay now coming on to the pathophysiology what are the course of events that take place during hemorrhage okay first of all bleeding happens due to which there will be hypo volemia due to which there will be low cardiac output now this will stimulate the shunting of blood from mesenteric vessels also we will see that there is a change uh, that is uh, there is tachycardia this is basically a uh, a way to maintain the perfusion to vital organs okay now this will further lead to hypoxia now due to this hypoxia what we will see is we will see activation of cardiac depressants due to them there will be an altered cell metabolism that is what you will see is suppose this is a cell we will see that there is a lot of efflux of the k positive ions and there is a lot of influx of the sodium and the calcium okay so what condition will occur hyponatremic hypocalcemic and hyperkalemic okay basically metabolic acidosis now this will lead to the lysis of the lysosomes lysis of lysosomes now these lysosomes they're going to release very powerful enzymes which will lead to sick cell syndrome sick cell syndrome this is very important now due to this what you will see is the platelets and they will be utilized leading to dic then there will be progressive hemodilution so that will lead to total circulatory failure now coming on to the uh, grading or the typing of hemorrhage shock or the basically the uh, staging so first of all or the classification first of all we will discuss about class then we will discuss about the blood loss then we will discuss about the features okay now in there are basically four classes okay now in the first class what happens is 15 percent of the blood has been lost that is basically less than 750 ml then 15 to 25 or 30 percent 30 percent so 750 to 1500 okay double it then 30 to 40 percent now this is uh, ranging to 2000 ml okay then more than 40 percent now this is where we have the hemorrhagic shock so this is more than 2000 ml 30 to 40 or 40 percent don't know we will have hemorrhagic shock now coming on to the features in this there it will be normal features or in this what you will see is we will see pallor pallor sorry thirst and tachycardia in this to remember it just remember an acronym is torch all right just don't write the r of it so t is tachycardia o is oliguria c is confusion and h is hypotension now in case of this what you will see is you will see that there is rapid pulse anuria then unconsciousness low bp and mods okay uh, now we will discuss about how to actually uh, what is the investigation that is to be done and what are the effects of hemorrhage so effects of hemorrhage is basically all these uh, plus you must remember that there appears a goose skin appearance now why does this happen is because of the contraction of the erector pylorum okay so appearance goose skin appearance also cold and clammy skin okay now signs of significant blood loss how can we say that uh, there has been a significant blood loss when the pulse is more than 100 per minute systolic bp is less than 100 mm of hg then diastolic bp it drops when the person sits and uh, stands is more than 10 mm of hg then pallor sweating also shock index more than one okay now uh, coming on to the measurement of blood loss uh, first of all what we do is uh, we usually think of a clot to be as the equal size of a clenched fist which is around 500 ml but there is a range factor that is usually uh, used to measure the amount of blood loss now in this what is the formula total amount of blood loss is equal to total difference 
in swab weight into 1.5 now if there are larger wounds then in this formula instead of 1.5 we write 2 okay uh, then coming on to the treatment now in treatment first of all we will have the hospitalization of the patient so uh, treatment first is hospitalization then second is the elevation and bed rest now uh, remember one thing suppose if there is variceal bleeding or bleeding of varicose veins so what you will see is we will elevate the legs but if suppose there is a surgery of thyroid going on okay and there is bleeding so we will elevate the head that is the anti trendelberg position anti trendelberg position now uh, for the blood loss you must uh, basically replace it uh, you have to compensate for it so we can give our, uh, we can give um, blood we can give sag then human albumin all the blood products okay uh, referring to the condition in hospitalization also uh, you have to uh, first treat the patient in abc criteria that is airway breathing and circulation so if it is uh, if the patient is uh, conscious then through mask breathing uh, or ventilation and if it is not then uh, you have to go on to endotracheal intubation then if the, there is a lot of fluid loss then isotonic saline or gelatin or heta starch which are the colloids and crystalloids they can be given then blood transfusion can also be done then uh, you have to match the uh, blood uh, now there is very important one point is pressure and packing now in this what we really do is uh, in suppose there is a uh, suppose there is a uh, uh, bleeding from nose and skull so what we will do is we will put a roller gauze or uh, with or without adrenaline to control the bleeding now if it is in case of vein if it is uh, in case of middle vein uh, middle thyroid vein or the superior thyroid vein then we also do the pressure pack again uh, by num okay then there is uh, one more thing uh, i also discussed about it during uh, my general medicine video there is Sengastex balloon. This should ring your mind for variceal bleeding. So this is also a procedure which is done. Okay, then tonic wets. Now, if uh, there are basically two types, one is the pneumatic cuffs and the other one is a rubber bandage. If you tie the tonic wet too loose, it will not serve the purpose. But if you tie it too tight, then there can be thrombosis. Now, if you tie it for a long period of time, then you will see that gangrene can occur. Uh, then it can also lead to ischemia so or nerve palsy. Now, the, uh, if all these procedures are not enough, so we will have to go to the surgery modality of the treatment. Now, in this uh, in surgical methods to control uh, hemorrhage, one is the application of the artery forceps. Okay, now artery forceps here are called as Spencerwell forceps. Okay, Spencerwell forceps. Then ligatures. Then cauterization. Another name for cauterization is diathermy. Then also the application of bone wax or horse lace wax. Okay, then we can also pertain to silver clips for cerebral vessels. Now, if there is splenic rupture, so we will pertain to splenectomy. If there is uh, uncontrollable postpartum hemorrhage, so uh, basically laparotomy, okay, and so on. Uh, sorry, hysterectomy, right? Uh, if there is, uh, sorry, if there is, uh, su suppose if there is postpartum hemorrhage, so we will do hysterectomy. But if there is a lot of bleeding from ruptured ectopic pregnancy, then we will have to do laparotomy, okay? So this completes the topic of hemorrhage. I hope you understood. Thanks for watching.